You're watching The Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. Today's topic, smile makeovers and same day dentistry. Uh, according to my first guest, he says nobody likes going to the dentist, so if you're gonna do it, you might as well go to a dentist that does everything right there, same day. With us, we have Dr. Marinick. Dr. Marinick, welcome to the program. Well, thank you. Now, we've had you on the program before, so, so thanks for coming back. Uh, for people that don't know your practice, I guess you kind of do just about everything, all right there. Well, I'm a general dentist, so we have patients that come to us with uh, teeth that they're not gonna last. So we have patients that maybe uh, need dentures and they don't wanna wear dentures, and we can uh, take care of them by giving them teeth that are supported on dental implants. Sometimes they're just missing a single tooth and they don't wanna have a bridge done and we can go ahead and put an implant in that area. So cutting in for just a moment, if you're just missing one tooth, why get a dental implant over a bridge? Well, to put a bridge on, you have to take the tooth on either side and grind it down so that it has something to attach to. For a dental implant, you leave them alone and you just deal with the tooth that's missing. And in the long run, it ends up costing less money to not touch the other teeth and just deal with the tooth that's missing. Okay, good. So sleep apnea is a big part of your practice as well? Yes. We have a lot of patients that come in Generally, their spouses will say they're snoring like crazy or they'll get a referral from a physician and we can fabricate an appliance so that they don't have to wear a CPAP. And uh, the patients love not having to uh, travel with the CPAP and uh, listen to the noise of the CPAP. So uh, it's worked out wonderfully for patients. Now, same day dentistry. This is, well, at least to me, it's like a new thing, right? Where people go to one guy that does everything. So you have a machine, I guess, that manufactures the crowns right there. Yeah, uh, we've had it actually for 25 years, so it's not... Same one? No, we're okay. in about a fourth generation, All right. and uh, the, each time they've evolved, and now the, um, the machine that we have in the office is the exact same machines that commercial dental laboratories have. So when a dentist sends the laboratory uh, a, a script to make a crown, and they make it, they now typically will mill it, and we actually have that machine in our office, so the patient only has to come once. Is that true, same day? I mean, somebody that needs a crown, because I guess normally you send it out. Yep. Wait a week or two weeks or whatever. So you do it just right there. Yeah, normally you take a mold and then send it to the lab. They pour up a stone model. They make it in wax. They cast it. They add the porcelain, and then they send it back. Uh, here we take a camera. We take photographs of the tooth. Design like the a rest wand goes in there. It's like a wand. It looks like a wand. So the goop is not part of it anymore uh, in your ge office. Generally, the goop is not part of it okay. in our office. What do you call it, by the way? Impression material. Impression material. Goop, okay. is, goop is fine. All right. All right. Uh, and so we go ahead and we design the restoration on a computer, and we have different types of material, and the milling machine makes it. Uh, if we need to custom stain and glaze it, we have the ovens right in the office. So while they wait. And then we deliver it. Yeah, it takes about an hour and a half to two hours. And that's it. How soon can they eat on something like that? Uh, as soon as the anesthetic goes away. So pretty shortly thereafter. Okay, it's good. fully hardened. So this whole concept of same-day dentistry, is it new, fairly new? Well, as I said, we've been doing it in our office for about 25 years. Um, all the materials that are available in a commercial lab are available uh, in our office right now. So... Um, for our office, it's not new. I've been doing it for a long, long time. Then we're talking about smile makeovers today, too, and doing okay. it quickly, I guess, in, 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 in the same day. Now, you're a dentist. Of course you think that the smile is the most important. It is. How important is it? <laughs> it is. I mean, patients, um, I had a, a lady the other day who came in. She went to her 40th high school reunion, and we did a complete smile makeover about five years ago. And she came back uh, just last week, and she said that everyone came up to her and said that her smile was as beautiful as the day she was in high school. That meant the world to her because for years she didn't smile at all. And so when she saw all of her former classmates, she said she just felt like she was the life of the, the whole reunion because everyone told her over and over again how wonderful her smile was. It is unusual. Like when you see somebody over 40 and they've got this great smile, you don't know, like with you, right? Yeah. Now, you haven't showed those upper teeth. We get a camera on those. I mean, it's like I was joking, saying he's got to be showing like 14 teeth on the top. Uh, and they look now, they're not big and bulky. And you told me they're veneers. Right, they are. Are they really veneers? Yeah, I knocked one off when I was eight years old. I went through high school with half a tooth. And then I got it patched because at the time in the 70s, we didn't have really great materials. And finally, a patient who wanted to have cosmetic dentistry 
asked me, because I had tetracycline, I had like gray bands that went all the way across my teeth. And so I learned to not smile. Really? And then I grew, a, the time my hair was very, very red, I had a bushy red mustache. That was my cosmetic <laughs> dentistry. Is that right? Yeah, and a lot of guys will grow a mustache to cover their teeth so you can't see their teeth. And so the patient asked me, she said, you know, why don't you get your teeth fixed? And I was like, wow. It's was, was like, you know, all upset that <laughs> the patient would tell, you know, I was the dentist young out of school. So I got them fixed about 20 years ago. Now I got crow's feet. Uh, I mean, I smile constantly. Do you get compliments on your smile? Because I, I was giving a sincere comment. When you walked in, it was the first thing I noticed. Even though I, I met love you before, to smile. But I know, I but I love to smile. And I didn't smile for, for a long, long time. Because every time I'd smile, when you look at photographs, you'd see like gray bands that went across. And now I love to smile. So there's an art to creating, I mean, it's obvious, but there's a, a, a real art to creating a natural smile. Yeah. But, but it, why is it, like when we see the, you know, some of these shows, housewife shows, there's always those big bulky veneers. Whose idea is that? Is that the patient that I'll ask you? I mean, who decided those big teeth? Well, I don't know. They don't if, look natural. I, I don't know who did it for the movie stars. I know in our practice, that's a decision that the patient has to make. I'm there as a coach to try to tell them what I see, because based on someone's shape of their face, based on certain things, there are certain shapes that are more pleasing. Once a patient and I agree on how it's going to look, then um, we go ahead and have it done in wax. Okay. The patient has to see it, how it looks in wax. That's not done the same day, because okay. this is really something that they're going to enjoy for a long, long time. So we're talking about the veneer process. We're talking about the veneer cosmetics in okay. the front, right? And so if they enjoy it, when we prepare the teeth, we use that wax up to make the temporary teeth. So and they get like a try and They smile. get a try and And what happens is... It, can check to make sure they like the aesthetics, the phonetics, the function, everything works. If it doesn't work, if they're not happy in the provisionals, it's very easy to make modifications. Once the patient likes them, then we capture an image on how they look, and the other ones are duplicated exactly how they are, uh, how the provisionals are. So there's, it's very important if you want natural teeth. I had a situation where I had a husband and wife, the wife had this olive skin, very soft face. And she always, her teeth were a little crooked. She always wanted to have a beautiful white smile. Okay. And so we gave her, she, she's gonna be an angel someday, okay? We gave her this absolutely gorgeous smile. And it's absolutely magnificent. Her husband had this, um, was an outdoorsman, uh, had this, olive skin also, but very rough because he was always outside, swimming, biking, you name it, and ground his teeth like crazy, all chipped, dark, and the, the patient said to her husband, why don't you go and have your teeth fixed? He says, I don't want to. And finally, he shows up and he says his teeth hurt. They've, they're worn down so bad That's that That's when they guys hurt. normally come, right? right. When they're they in pain. And so I asked him, I said, you know, would you like your teeth a little whiter? No. I said, so you want them dark and gray? Yes. How about straightening them? Do you want them so they look? No, I just don't want them to hurt. I said, so you want me to give you a smile that's dark and crooked? He said, yeah, I just, I don't want to look different. I don't want it to look like I ever went to the dentist. Okay. And so I gave it to him. He goes home and he asks his wife, he says, what do you think? She says, I think you have to go to the dentist. He says, this is exactly what I wanted. Nothing hurts anymore. So the point is, it's not for me to decide. Okay. It's for me to coach with the patient. But if a patient doesn't want, like a Hollywood, we had a patient who was a teacher. Okay. She was a teacher her whole life. And she finally finished and retired. And now, you know, she's a very young spirit. Now she wanted to become an actress. And she's been on a lot of commercials. And she wanted a smile makeover. Now, she wanted a smile makeover so she could get jobs. Yeah. And so I, we, we talked to her uh, agent and kind of made a compromise to figure out what... Really? You get with the agent? Well, we, in this case, this was the purpose, right? Okay. She wanted so to be an be, actress. She wanted to be an actress, right? And so we wanted to find out what 
they were looking for that still, I mean, because she during the day, she's, so her teeth were a little bit wider than okay. she would have picked or I would have picked. And she's gotten lots of commercials. She's on quite a few different commercials. And she's just having a blast right now. So smile, So there's a lot of people that don't like their smile. There are. Are they, there really? And they, and they learn to not smile. They'll learn to talk with their lips closed. They look, sometimes they look angry, but they're not real angry. So, you know, when, when you change a smile, you change a life. You now, believe that? You really believe that? No, it, it's true. You've I mean, seen it? I've seen it happen over and over again with patients. We had a patient who, um, very, very nice patient. He went out uh, with his wife and someone was cracking a joke. He laughed and his dentures flew out of his mouth. He was so humiliated, he didn't go out for six years. Six years. He didn't go out anymore. Full upper and lower uh, smile, supported on implants. And I just saw him last week. He's the, one of the happiest men you've ever seen. He got, he was retired, got back into the workforce, doing some things for uh, the federal government, and just happy. He's just a happy guy. You know, uh, my son and I were talking about this, uh, that like in the movies, if you want to make somebody look poor, you mess up their teeth. Right. right? If you want to make them look uneducated, you, you pull out one of their teeth, or at least blacken it, right? Uh, if you want to make somebody look fake or like a, 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 some sort of a con artist, you give them big bulky teeth, big fake veneer looks. Mm -hmm. So how much goes into the design as far as you, you know, you, when you design their smile? Like, is it more art or science? It's about half art, half science. We've worked with um, different actors and actresses to actually make them the smiles depending on what their role is. So we'll make them teeth. that look natural. Well, I'm talking about if they don't want to look natural. I'm talking about for actors and actresses that oh, are actually in, in shows and movies where they'll come back and we'll be told, you know, what to do to make them look exactly like you said, poor or desperate or whatever. But when patients come in for a smile that they want to actually have, um, you've got to figure out what looks natural for a lot of patients. If you go too white, it looks fake. If the patient gets their, if you get your mouth done and someone says those look like really nice veneers, you know that you missed the boat. Okay. So there's, a, there's just a tremendous amount of things that go into making sure that you have a smile where the size of the teeth and the color of the teeth and the position of the teeth match the patient's face and complexion. Now you are used to dealing, as you said, I mean with really people with bad teeth. Right. So are you ever too far gone to have a beautiful smile? No. Really, never. There's always a way. There's always a way. Patients that if someone has a dream of having a gorgeous smile, there's always a way of giving a you can gorgeous do it. smile. Yep. So after dental school, right? Mm -hmm. Because I, we've talked about that. I mean, you've been kind of like a continuing education junkie. <laughs> that means where you're always, is there really that much to it? Yeah, there's a lot to it. There's I said it a lot. with all due respect. Well, because the thing is, from the science aspect of it, you have to know materials that you use that don't cause sensitivity. That I mean, I gnaw on ribs, I eat bones, I eat whatever I want to eat. I, I'm not careful because I'm afraid a veneer is going to pop off. So you have to understand adhesive science. You have to know how the different product works. You have to know dental materials because different dental materials have different strengths, but they also have different optical properties. So if you want to be able to create a smile that matches someone's face, you need to have materials that mimic what their natural teeth would look like. Some people's teeth um, are very translucent. Other people's teeth are almost opaque and white. You have to be able to know the shape of the teeth. You have to be able to know um, how to make them so that they don't look like perfect white fence posts, but don't make them crooked where it looks like someone needs to go to the orthodontist so either. So what are the different categories of cosmetic dentistry in your practice? Well, the first would be just lightening the teeth. So if the position of the teeth is good, it's just the color, Simply just brightening the teeth can make the teeth three, four shades lighter, and it makes someone have a more youthful looking smile. Not very expensive, works real well. A lot of times uh, we'll actually have recommend over-the-counter treatment after the patient has uh, um, their over -the -counter teeth Over-the-counter whitening you're talking yeah, about? A lot of times it okay. will work. It just depends on, the, uh, depends on the color of the teeth, if it's gray or yellow or brown. Um, the next would just be teeth that are just in the wrong position. 
Uh, and if someone has healthy teeth, light teeth, but they're just crooked, maybe they need to see an orthodontist. We okay. won't hesitate if that's what's in their best interest is, is to send them to an orthodontist to have their teeth straightened. Um, another could be chipped or broken teeth, or if someone has dark lines from metallic restorations to replace some restorations. Yeah, so when you see the teeth with the gray line at the top, yep, that's an easy fix. What is that, by the way? Well, a traditional crown had a metal body for strength with a thin layer of porcelain. The materials that we use now have no metal in them. They're all ceramic. So that just eliminates that problem altogether. Even if someone has recession over the years, as I have a little bit, okay. you still can't see where the veneer stops and the crown starts. So, um, and then of course you can have patients that have no teeth at all, that want to be able to have a beautiful smile that doesn't come out. We can do that now with dental implants. So veneers don't stain, like your teeth, they're white. They're pretty much going to stay that color? They're pretty much going to stay that color. You can drink tea or coffee, it doesn't really matter. Yes, but one of the things you have to be careful of is that there are two different ways to get color. You can get color on the surface of a veneer or you can get color within the veneer. If you get color on the surface of the veneer and you get an overzealous hygienist, she can polish all of the stain off and all of a sudden it looks like you have chiclets running across. Interesting. Yeah, we don't make those kind of veneers. The color is always all the way incorporated through. So wherever I specify color, I actually draw a color map for every single veneer. Every, really? Every tooth has a map and I specify where I want color. And so the color is, is the, the tooth is cut back and that specific color is added there. So, so it, like teeth at the bottom are whiter and then they get a right. little so more Right, so basically color at the top. As, as the teeth wear over the years, it wears like a natural tooth. So the, so the color isn't just on the surface. That's a huge difference and patients aren't really aware of that. But that's the difference between having something that looks good in 20 years and that looks good for a year. Now I know that, uh, I guess cosmetic dentistry is not a recognized specialty, but do you consider yourself a cosmetic dentist? Everything we do is cosmetic. Everybody wants, whether it's a single tooth or a complete smile, everyone wants it to look like it's natural. So um, I think everything. What, and I asked this earlier, but when, when I see big giant veneers, is that in the hands of the dentist? Usually, I mean, is that? Uh... It's in the hands of the dentist. Sometimes patients request really, really white, super white teeth. And I have to sit and explain to them that these are designed to last for a very long time. They're not like artificial nails that you can just change back and forth. Okay. So how do you decide what it's going to look like? So on the consultation, how do they know? You show them pictures? Well, the reality is, is that I've been doing it so long that as soon as I see the patient's shape of their face and I have a pretty good understanding of the morphology of how their teeth should look, in my mind, I have an idea of a good starting point. From that starting point, I have some books, and we look at the edges of the teeth. Some look very feminine, some look very masculine. If you have a surface of a tooth that's very shiny, it's going to give you that look that you described. A natural tooth has some surface topography to it. And so if you want a youthful look, you're going to go towards one end. If you want a mature look, you're going to go towards another end. If you want a natural look and you try to create an 18-year-old smile for a 50-year-old, it, there's this disconnect, the dissonance, and so that's where the art comes in. You explain it, and that's why for cosmetic cases, we always do it with a trial period. We always make sure that the patient's happy with the way it looks when it's in the provisional, temporary states. If they don't like it in the temporary states, it's very easy to fix. Now, when they see their smile for the first time, you, after you've done the veneers or whatever, you say they get choked up sometimes. Yeah, we give them a mirror, a mirror right in the chair, and usually they're just streams of tears that are coming out of the patient's eyes. I had this one lady who came in and when we gave her, uh, when we completed the treatment, we gave her a mirror and tears just started welling up in her eyes and she was just crying and crying and crying. And I was hope that they were tears of joy and they were. Um, she told me that when she was very, very young, she was the youngest of uh, eight kids and she went to the dentist and she was put to sleep and they, she came out with a denture at 14 years old. Wow. And uh, at, she was a little over 50 years old and this was something she dreamed of 
her whole life was to have a full smile uh, of teeth that didn't come out. And so she was just elated that, you know, and it happens over, it happens with veneers, it happens with full mouth implant restorations. Um, patients' lives are changed because they see themselves how they want to see themselves for the first time. They don't have to hide their smile. They can just smile, they can go out, they date, they get easier for them to get jobs. It's easier for them just to be a, a lot of times. Because they're smiling. They're I guess smiling. Two you candidates know, for a job, obviously the one that looks happy and positive. Yeah, or the, one that's or the one that's sitting there holding their mouth. Or patients are very creative in learning how to hide their smiles. Really? So they develop their their techniques. And so one of the things that's interesting is they actually have to learn to smile. Really? They've been not smiling for so long that when they have a beautiful smile, they have to relearn how to smile. Uh, we had a, a grandma, and she realized that all the pictures with her grandchildren, she had covered her mouth. And the reason that she got her smile redone was so that her grandchildren would remember grandma as a smiley grandma. And she just, nice. when we were finished, I looked at her and she said, I'm going to put my face, I'm going to have a grandchild on either side of me and I'm just going to smile and have as many pictures taken as possible. So that's another thing that happens is a lot of times when patients don't have smiles, beautiful smiles, they always duck out of the pictures. Yeah. So, so they always kind of figure out a way to not be in the photos. Like so, on Facebook, by the way. Whatever. And it might ever be. since I talked to you, I'm noticing certain women and, and, and guys, they're never smiling in their picture. Ever. Right. So it makes me think they're hiding something, right? Well, they're just protecting themselves. So do you themselves. fix their smiles and now they're doing selfies on Facebook? Yeah, they are. They're doing selfies like crazy. The last thing I tell patients after they have their smile makeover is when they drive home to look at the road, don't look in the rearview mirror because I've had two patients in 30 years, unfortunately. They weren't severely injured, but they got into car accidents because they kept looking at their smiles. They can't stop looking at they their teeth. They can't stop looking at their teeth. They just are elated in having a smile, but they have to do it when they're not driving. So you really see, I mean, you know, when it's not lip service for you. I mean, when you say you could change your smile, change your life, you believe that? It is, it's you, true, really? absolutely. It changed my life when I got a smile. It changes patients' lives every day throughout the country. Like just even little things, like a gap in the front. If there's, if, there's, if there's something that's holding you back and you change it, and now you're, you're free to be able to smile freely and enjoy yourself, it doesn't just affect you, it affects everyone around you as well. It affects, if someone's laughing and they're smiling and they're enjoying life, the people around them, they want to be around them more. Yeah, now we're short on time, but you, you say you just have like hundreds of photos of yeah. patients, We have of makeovers. a whole server that's just full of patient photos, of smiles, individual teeth. We have on our website, we have a number of different patients that have had their smiles redone and how it's affected So when life. should somebody get, get something done? Like well, cosmetic it, dentistry? Well, I mean, if it bothers you and if you're thinking about it, do something about it. Figure out what your treatment options are. If there's a gap between your teeth and you don't want to smile in pictures or if you don't like the color, if there's something about your smile that's holding you back, do something about it so you can enjoy the rest of your life. You know, just talk about it and think about it. Find out what your treatment options are. Now, do are. people do this like special occasions? Is this one of those things like, you know, they do it getting for married, all kinds their daughter's of reasons. getting married? That would be a reason that patients do it. But sometimes patients just wake up and they just had enough and they want to do something. Or they applied for a job and they didn't get it. Or a relationship didn't work out and they're like, you know what, I'm, I just don't feel like I can smile. They don't, they don't feel like they can be themselves and they get their smile and it really changes their you lives. You said you change, like you it see changes personality their lives. changes when they come it in. It does, it really? changes their lives. They become happier. Patients like to smile. They don't want to have to hide. They learn how to do it, but when a patient gets to smile full out, they love it. They just enjoy themselves. <laughs> okay, good. Now back to the crowns, because originally we talked about same day dentistry. Okay. Okay, so this whole same day concept, how long have you been doing this? As just, far as the same day dentistry stuff? Just about 25 years. Okay. <laughs> but is it just now becoming more mainstream? Um, I think that the equipment that's out right now makes it easier, and there are certainly more doctors that are using it, and there are more companies now that have the equipment that did 25 years ago. So you have like a mini lab right there in your office. Yeah, is no, that right? absolutely. It makes teeth right there for you. We have a machine that makes them and we have everything we need to stain and glaze them so that the color matches perfectly. The patients ever watch their teeth being made? Yeah, they do. You let them fact. in there? 
Yeah, it's out, it's not in there. I have it out. The lab is the lab, and I have that machine out where everyone can see it. So crowns while you wait. So if you call a dentist, yeah. And again, I'm not trying to side with you. Do you ask them? Do you have the machine that makes the crowns right there? Is that a fair question? It is, especially patients that are busy or patients that don't want to have to get numb twice. They want to be able to come in, have the work done, and go on with their life and just enjoy life. So for cosmetic dentistry, are the patients getting younger and younger or older and older? You know, they're, they're really, we have a whole cross-section. We have patients as, that are in their late teens that simply maybe just need bleaching or need to see an orthodontist. All, all ages. Needing What's the oldest all, veneer patient you think you've had? The oldest, the oldest patient I ever had was 100. Okay. And his wife was 99. He couldn't eat anymore because the bone had resorbed so much that the denture hurt him. There was the funniest two people that I've ever been with. He tried to say something and he turns to his wife because his wife interrupted and says, honey, will you please let me finish my sentence? I'm talking to the dentist. And she says, I haven't let you finish the sentence in 75 years. Why would I start now? <laughs> so, so no matter how old you are, you can get a smile made. It's over. never too old to so get 30s, a smile. So 30s, 40s, 50s, divorced, 60s, 70s. You're single again. You might as well get your teeth fixed. Just enjoy a beautiful smile and enjoy being out there and smiling. You know, we've talked and, and you said that most of your patients, that before they finally go to you, they've been thinking that they don't like their smile for like 10 or 15 years. Absolutely. Is that true? Yeah. A lot of times they, they didn't like their smile. They got married. They still didn't like their smile. Some of them got divorced. Then they got their smile fixed so that they can go out and date when they're in their 40s. Some of them didn't like their smiles. Um, you know, they just kept getting chipped and broken and darker over the years or they would lose teeth. So it's usually something that goes on for a long time and then something just triggers them where they just had enough. So if you're gonna do it, do it now. they should go to you. Yeah, come, come see us, we'll take good care so of you. So you'll meet with them, and you have very natural veneers, but you didn't do your own veneers. No, I joke with my friend that did it that, I, I designed them though. Oh, you did, okay, yes. so you, and you just told them what to do. Okay, good. So final message, somebody watching this, maybe they're a type A or they're, they've got every excuse not to go to the dentist. They're busy. They don't have the time. Uh, you know, they don't like their smile, but they don't have the time. And then the people that have hated their smile, what do you say to them? Come in, see us, let me take a look and tell you what your options are. We can figure out timing that works with you and patients, when they're finished, love the fact they, almost every time they say, I wish I would have done this years ago. Is that right? Because people go years, I guess, not liking it. Yeah. And, uh, and then now you're a general practice. Do you also see them for the cleanings and things like yeah, that? Yeah, we follow up and we okay. make sure everything's maintained as well. Okay, good. Thanks again for coming on in. You've been watching The Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez for now. I wish you good health. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.